Um, Mr. Hodge, um, I'm deferring to um, um, the senior member of the of the group. Oh. Um, wants to talk about Montoyo and his dismissal because he didn't get a chance to last week. Uh, and I think it's a, a perfectly valid topic for at least the next little while. Why do you think he got fired, Dave? Uh, well, the front office uh, um, installed the manager that it wanted and eventually uh, realized that um, it needed uh, the manager that the team needed uh, some leadership in the dugout was necessary. And um, so uh, the front office reluctantly had to, uh, had to agree that uh, it made a mistake. I mean, I think, I, I don't think Charlie Montoyo deserved to be fired as such. I just don't think he deserved to be hired. Uh, and um, the dugout was being run by everybody but the manager. And we'll see whether that changes now um with uh with, with schneider but w you know one interesting point was we're back to guerrero again but he was widely quoted earlier in the season as saying he he didn't like to hit higher than third he wanted to be up in the first inning but he wanted to see two batters ahead of him immediately after the managerial change where's vladimir guerrero batting second in the order and the last game that Charlie Montoyo managed what might have been Vladimir Guerrero's most embarrassing game at home anyway. Three awful strikeouts, uh, a play at first base that was uh, sloppy fielding. Um, and Vladdy was basically yelling at the dugout, don't bother challenging because I missed the base. Couldn't you see that with all your cameras and telephones and everything else? And then there's, I'm told, Vladdy got to the dugout, Montoyo approached him, and Vladdy dismissed him with a swipe of the hand, and somebody upstairs said, if there needed to be a final straw, we need somebody running the dugout, and it can't be one of our players. I believe the decision to fire him was made after they were swept in Seattle, and they would have done it then, except the next day was the funeral of the daughter of the first base coach. So they weren't mm -hmm. going to do it at that point. The team was going to, to, I think, Virginia for the funeral and then coming home the next day. And so they went one more day and then they come off that horrible road trip uh, and really not a good first half of the season in many different ways. And then they have the game you're talking about, Dave, with the incidents. And I think the whole Guerrero Bichette, you know, these are our guys that we are building this whole thing around. Neither of them are having good years. Neither of them look disciplined. Neither of them uh, have focus at times. Why is that? It's we have to change the leadership here and hope that either John Schneider or who manages the team going forward um, will be someone who can bring these young pieces, these young stars back to where they need them to be. And I, I truly believe that that night as you point out, Dave, and I, and I wrote that in, in my column the day of the firing, that, you know, this, is, this was so much about Vladdy Guerrero and so much about this player that they're going to be, you know, linking their entire future to. And this manager, you know, you can be in favor of Charlie Montoyo or against him. The one thing he lacked from the day he got here to the day he got fired was presence. And he didn't have that. And when you needed him to have that, he wasn't able to do that. And so even managing a team where you're told what the batting order is and you're told what the analytics are and you're told who to, who to pitch when and how many pitches each guy is allowed and, and someone else is calling all your shots for you, you still need to have some form of presence. He, unfortunately for Charlie, he didn't have that. Well, well, the the devil's ad, to, to be the devil's advocate, Dave, the fact that Guerrero, uh, you know, waved Montoya aside and they fired Montoya, doesn't that tell you that the players are running the asylum at, at, to, to some level? Well, except that if you're waiting for Charlie Montoya to uh, stand up to Vladimir Guerrero and uh, show that the players aren't running the, the, uh, the dugout, then you're waiting forever. You need somebody else to be able to do that. And as I say, the change in the batting order may be a small thing. 
but yeah. I noticed it right away. And um, what we don't know is whether a new manager, um, given the fact that he was already there, it's not somebody new coming in and cracking the whip, and this isn't the guy who's going to do that anyway. What we don't know is whether this will make any kind of a big difference because you certainly can't base it on what happened uh, against Kansas City. You know, they won three games. They might have lost three games to an uh, undermanned team. Um, and um, the, boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what. Don't, don't accuse me of changing the, the narrative again. But vaccination is going to be a fascinating part of the rest of this season. Mm -hmm. uh, who's traded? Um, uh, Robbie Ray's unvaccinated, right? We understand that, don't we? I, I wasn't even aware of that. Well, I mean, he didn't even bother. He I wasn't going to pitch, but he didn't even bother making the trip uh, to to Toronto. So let's imagine Seattle is playing a best of three series in Toronto, first round of the playoffs. Is Robbie Ray going to pitch? And well, how's better. He he, pitch? The answer is he pitch? better. How's he going to pitch if he can't get into the country?